Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm here checking out Cursed Castilla, Mat Maldita Castilla EX, I think, because this game's title is really annoying. So here it says Cursed Castilla EX, M Maldita Castilla EX, but if you hit the home button and go back to the little icon here, it just says Cursed Castilla, but if you look at the icon it says Cursed Castilla EX, but then if you come back here and scroll back down, Cursed Castilla, Matilda Castilla EX. It, what? Titles, guys, come on. But yeah. This is... This is what... This game is for Ghouls and Ghosts, what Shovel Knight was to Castlevania and Mega Man. More or less. That's the general idea. It's, uh... It's not so much a reimagining as it is just a nostalgic throwback to the my speakers are on hang on i need to remember to turn these bloody things off but yeah as i was saying that the game is more or less a throwback to ghouls and ghosts and its sequel ghosts and goblins although i think it's more ghouls and ghosts but you will see that shortly there's uh, that intro scene is really long so we'll just skip the rest of it and here it is see, it even says cursed castile there not cursed castila guys but yeah, anyway, 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 anyway. So, you've got a couple of options that you can fill around with here. You can make it so that it's 1-1 one, one pixel density. You can size it up just a little bit so that it fits the entire vertical width. You can make the border disappear and you can fill it up entirely. Filling it up entirely is extremely ugly, so let's not do that. You can also reverse the buttons so that jump is shoot and shoot is jump. But you, you really don't need to do that. The basic controls work just fine. And you can also turn on the speedrun timer. That's pretty much it. You can also reset the high scores. There's a codex that you can go to that lets you see a couple of story details, a bit of lore. And they're, they're basically just like bestiaries and unlocks. Nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. So the game is actually pretty lightweight as far as I can tell. I've been playing it for the past two hours, however. And I'm pretty sure I didn't even get two thirds of the way through it. So... It's certainly one of those games, I promise you that much. So, if you don't like me failing games constantly, you're probably going to want to look away from this one, because it's going to be pretty bad. So, let's do this. I got up to chapter 5 or 6, I can't remember exactly which one, in the two hours that I was playing, and I continued about 30 times. So, yeah, this game is certainly no pushover. But I did go back, make a new game, and we're starting at chapter 2, because chapter 1 is actually kind of boring gameplay-wise. It's just as hard, sure, but I mean, it's it's not that good to watch. So we'll start with something slightly more interesting, which is the harpy attack on the cart here at the beginning of chapter 2. So, um, I'm just going to call it Castilla, because that's pretty much the only part of the name that's even consistent. Castilla is, as I said, very ghouls and ghosts. Like, you've got the bloody throwing knives, but you've got a bunch of other different weapons you can equip as well. There's a bunch of secondary pickups. There's, like, keys and uh, little extra bombs that you can have as blue fairies. There's other little things that you can get, like a shield, but, I mean, it's really basic stuff. You have three hits on every life. You can see them up in the top left there. And you can replenish them by meat, some of which I just got, but thankfully I didn't need it because I'm actually... Somewhat decent at this after having played it a few times. But yeah, the game is very ghouls and ghosts. It feels just like it. You have the same sort of jump. There's a boss fight. They always come... Well, they don't always come out of nowhere. They, they do make sense when they do show up. It's just, yeah, sometimes they just surprise you. I'll put it that way. Thankfully, I am fully aware of how to play this thing. Also, my mate in the background there is taking swings at it every time it comes close, which is fantastic, because this boss would be pretty hard to fight if you, did, if you didn't. Ow. But yeah. Basic controls, as you saw on the options menu, really damn simple. You move with the D-pad, you jump with the X button, you fire a missile out with the square button. You can have different kinds of missiles, like you can have scythes, which you can get three of, but they're short range and they come back at you. You can have axes, which do more damage and fly up in an arc. You have three daggers that can go out in a hor in a um, shotgun style pattern. You get the general idea, right? So it is it is very basic, but what it does have going for it is its 
I'm gonna call it retro difficulty level because seriously, this game matches up with pretty much every every game of this kind that I can think of. Even some of the more recent ones of this kind that I can think of, like Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins on the PSP, which you can actually play on the Vita. And if you like, if you like a look at this, I would fully recommend you go get that too. By the way, that game is absolutely fantastic. Oh look, a double jump. Extra time as well, that's very useful in this game. You have no idea. But yeah, the game is... The game is super hard. There's just, like, no... No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is a super hard platforming test of skill, patience, and whatever else have you. And... You just have to try and get through without dying. It's really that simple. It it does have a plot. There's a queen's daughter or something. I think that's the case. A princess who makes a key out of her own tears. Which is apparently capable of releasing demons into the world. And the demons want it, but so do you. So you've gone out to either A, rescue the princess, or B, get the key. Whichever one works, I guess. And that's pretty much the entire plot. It's literally just go through this ridiculous set. I'm gonna get hit because, yeah, you can get hit by the windmill blades in this. That's how much they're not fucking around. Bloody windmill blades can and will hurt you. But yeah, that's more or less it. That's its, that's its statement of intent. It's a fucking hard game and it's going to be a fucking hard game until the end of damn time. And a lot of people will love it for that. And considering that I have a pretty unhealthy liking for these sorts of games, despite the fact that I absolutely suck at them, well, yeah, it's a good game. It's well designed. It's got all of the mainstays of this sort of game. You've got enemy patterns that are frustrating but predictable. You've got levels that are the same every time. And so... You have... I wasn't going to dodge that no matter what I did. Yep, down I go. I'm actually kind of ma I'm amazed I made it through that entire stage without dying. That's that's really impressive on my part, I've got to say. But, um... Yeah. The, every stage is laid out the same way, and it's laid out in a tough but fair way. Pretty much every screw-up in this game is your fault. Doesn't make it not frustrating when the screw-ups do happen because the game is definitely an asshole in the game design logic. It, it's definitely taking cues from the old G and G titles because Jesus Christ, some of this shit can be infuriating. But it's never unfair. It never throws shit at you and expects you to know how to avoid it. You always get fair warning that something's about to happen. You always get. You always get everything you need to avoid danger. And it's... It is very well designed. It is extremely well designed in that regard. It's not like Slain where it... It feels like a brick wall. And it takes a really long time just to get over even a single bloody stage. In this game... It is a lot more... I don't want to call it more fair... But at the same time, it feels like that it's a lot more... Hmm, how do I put it? Encouraging. Yeah, that'll do. It feels a lot more encouraging to your um, typical player. Just because it's not a absolutely massive jerk about it. Yeah, I actually got an extra life out of that. It's not an absolutely massive jerk about its level design. It can, it can screw with you, but it's... For the most part, it's usually okay. Although I will... Although I will say that when I say this game is hard, it is fucking hard. It can... The only reason I'm making this game look so easy is because I've been through all these stages before and I have a rough idea of what's coming. This game can absolutely floor you at the... Oh god, it's a headless knight. Now, this game can absolutely floor you without trying. It is... It is very very good at what it does, which is trying to screw you into making a mistake. That is pretty much what all these games do, and this game is extremely good at that. 
And considering that you only have three health, well, you're going to be in a pretty bad spot if you take more than one or two hits. All the different weapons are useful in their own different ways. There's an absolute... Yep, I'm dead. That's, that comes to be expected. I took... I went for the super weapon. It's not even a super weapon, really. It's just a weapon. I went for the weapon and I paid for it. Why did I try and jump over him? All the levels are laid out like gauntlets. They... You get a checkpoint every time you do a screen transition. But other than that... Have fun. Have fun grinding the same bits of the game over and over again. Because this game is an absolute... A douche about some of them. Like the... The turtle jumping in... The turtle jumping in it was either chapter 4 or 5. That can go to hell. And there are a couple of other levels I can think of too. That I would happily just tell to go... Screw itself in the most impolite ways possible. Let's try a different weapon for this one. Sickle. Oh, fuck, a bolus again. Why not? Gotta try another one. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> right. This time, I won't take the, underwa um, the underwater. The underground path. If you fall into water in this game, you die. So, with the whole game being based around lives and everything, you're probably wondering, what's the continue system like? Well, if you want me to be completely honest, I'm not 100% sure yet. There's a... You can continue as much as you like, first of all. So, you know, hooray. It doesn't matter... Oh, shit, I should have focused on the bloody knife first and foremost, but... Well, I paid for it with a hit, with a hit point. But as I was saying about the continue system, you can continue as much as you want. That's absolutely fine. But... If you... Take... More than four continues? Well, that, that's actually the interesting part. I'm not entirely sure what happens yet. It gives you a little prompt saying, Hey, if you continue again, you're gonna lose your soul. I assume that's something to do with the story, but I haven't actually gone to the point where it seems to be of any particular relevance yet. So... Damn it, I almost had it. Those dragons are on a pad and I just jumped too early. I mean, obviously, you lose your high score as well, but... This is me we're talking about. I am never going to attempt a score run on any game like this. It's just not going to happen. For fuck's sake. I was trying to turn around and throw my bloody spears back at the dude, but... It's got that Castlevania thing where if you're mid-animation, it won't let you do it. You know, like, it takes a couple of seconds to throw out the whip in Castlevania, and once you've thrown out the whip, well, if anyone tries to hit you, well, they're probably going to hit you. It definitely does that. And while you do have some control over, like, jumping, you're still going to have, like, you, you still don't have as much control in the air as you do on the ground. It is definitely one of those games. It's stiff, but it's not its not really unfairly stiff, if you want me to... Well, of course you want me to be honest, but it's not unfairly stiff. I can't say that this game has screwed me over with its control scheme, because it's just... It's made some jumps that are just... Why did I jump? Fuck! <laughs> God, brain, work with me here. I can't believe I, I made that. Take him out so that the knight gets closer to me and I can pelt him through of spears. There are, of course, secrets and alternate routes to take if you have an eye for those sorts of things. Some of them are just, like, way more difficult marches across the course because generally you'll have to visit, like, three out of four corners of a bloody arena in order to... You'll have to visit three out of four corners of an arena in order to get something like a, a key to take to the fourth corner. You know, ridiculous stuff like that. But, I mean, other than that, the game 
It's it's mostly just a straight shot. I haven't seen any sort of like split paths like in say Castlevania the Dracula X Chronicles. Also a ridiculously good game, by the way. There we go. That's more like it. And of course there is a speed run to this game as well. A speedrun trophy, I should say, where you have to beat the game in 50 minutes. And considering that I've been playing the game for about two hours and I feel like I'm not even close yet, well, if that doesn't give you an idea of how long this game will be at least the first time around, well, I don't know what will. This isn't actually the way to go, by the way. This is the way to unlock a secret, which I've never actually been able to pull off because these goddamn lost souls are the most annoying thing in the world. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to lose the fairy to get the key. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to make it down here on one hit point, but I've got to try anyway, right? Also, sudden spikes. The game's combat is satisfying as well, obviously. You've seen a bunch of it. It has some great weapons. They all, they all feel great, and none of them feel particularly useless. Like, even the daggers come in use in a couple of stages where to the point where you'd probably want to pick them over pretty much any other kind of weapon. Just, everything feels like it has a purpose. It doesn't feel like anything's just been stitched on to, um, you know, make it more retro or anything like that. And the graphical style looks pretty damn good as well. Obviously, it's, it's not as technically advanced or impressive as something like Shovel Knight. But I don't think that's what they were going for. I think they were going for something more akin to the original Ghouls and Ghosts. And honestly, I do think they've hit that sort of theme just down pat. They've done a really nice job of it. As far as I can personally say. I actually made it down here. What's in here? Oh, I know what this is. It'll be one of those gems. Yeah. More was tear. That's not how you say that at all. I had a stroke halfway through saying that. But yeah, that's generally one of the things you get for going through a particularly hard gauntlet. I don't know what they do yet. I assume you have to finish the game to find out. Also, I really have no idea if this is going to have a, a ghouls and ghosts style thing where you have to beat the game twice in order to actually see the true ending. And that would be... That would be an absolute dick, but it would be fitting in with the theme, so... I'm really not going to argue too heavily against it if it does exist. I'm just saying, I'll hate you forever, devs of... Castilla, that's what I said I'd call it. This is a bit of a dick one right here, you got to admit. I think this is a boss now. Yep, boss time. The Manticore! But yeah, the game does the game does fit its theme quite well. It looks great. It sounds Well, actually, I'm not that into the music. I don't think it's that good. I think it's a bit I think it's a bit underwhelming for what I'm actually doing on screen. I will give the game credit though. It's based on well, I don't want to call it Spanish mythology, because not all of it is mythology. Like, I mean, one of the bosses in the game is actually based off Don Quixote, and he looks bloody insane. So, he's also bloody hard to fight. Like, pretty much everything else in this game. But, the theme itself works pretty, pretty well. So, you know, I've got nothing against that. I just think that the, the music probably could have been done a bit better in a different style, maybe to you know, match with what's going on on screen a bit more. But then again, maybe that was kind of the point. Maybe they were trying to be underwhelming. You know, take a little bit of emphasis off the fact that this really shouldn't be a fight of angels and demons. You're literally just a guy. Actually, there might be split paths. Oh, I know. I'm you know what? Screw it. Down we go. Yeah. No. There's no split paths. I just... Here I am thinking that I could go... Down this tower. Not true in the slightest. 
But anyway, up we go. I actually more or less just ran straight through this tower because this... All of this, like, shit that they've got going on here gets so ridiculous so quickly that... It doesn't feel like it's worth the time or effort to... It doesn't feel like it's worth the time or, time or effort to take out these all these bloody faces, so... Excuse me if I feel the need to just run right through it. Because I managed to pull it off once already, I might be able to do it again. So this game will be out on November 9th? Yeah, November 9th. I'm just... My, my brain. Shield! This ain't gonna last me very long, I promise you that much. Oh, daggers. Wonderful. To be fair, these might actually help me out a bit in this next stage. We'll see, but... Yeah, because of these... These damn fire-shitting bats. They're a bit of a dick to take on, I'll tell you that much, but... Yeah, this will be out November 9th. Uh, that is worldwide. So Europe, uh, North America, and Asia. And it'll be... Oh, fuck, I, I hit the, du the duck button like half a second too late. Not even that. It'll be out on... Yeah, it'll be out on November 9th, but... And the price? The price is what I was going to say. Eleven ninety nine. Pretty good, I reckon. Considering that the game's got a fair bit of replayability and that it's um, quite difficult, you know, it's got all that going for it. So, you know, for for that, pretty good. Wouldn't argue too heavily against it. There is also going to be a physical version at Play Asia available on the same day, which you can use the affiliate link in the description to go and buy and you know support me. This is the Don Quixote boss, by the way. Crazy Quixote. He's a dick. These damn knives. And here comes the flames from above. You can only hurt him while he's on fire after all that, so... You know... Have fun with that. But yeah, I mean... I'm not massively impressed. Like, it, it definitely doesn't feel like it's on the same level as Shovel Knight. But what it does, it does pretty damn well. It's got good gameplay design. It looks and more or less sounds the part. And it just also happens to be really damn difficult at the same time. So, you know, like... I got... I got nothing really against it, except for the fact that it's a super hard platformer, and I absolutely fucking suck at these. It's alright. I'm gonna beat Crazy Coyote. He's gonna fucking die. Unfortunately, I don't have my fairy or my daggers anymore, but this... This isn't a disadvantage in this game, thank god. It's not like having, um, it's not like having daggers in Castlevania. There's the one that... There's the one he skips across the ground. That's a dick one. It's always the third one, too, which is nice, because it means you can predict when it's going to come out. If it, if, it, if it even is, if you're on the right side for it or whatever. I imagine someone's already done a one life run of this game. And I reserve the right to call them insane bastards. Three... nope. <laughs> was paying attention to the wrong set of... set of axes, wasn't I? But yeah, if you... If you like your platformers with a bit of tough but fair challenge, give this one a go. I'd probably recommend something a little easier to start off with, like Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, or, um... Castlevania Dracula X, or maybe even Shovel Knight, because Shovel Knight's still pretty difficult. 
while also remaining more, a little bit more beginner friendly than this one, I'll say that much, but... I mean, if you've played all of them and you're looking for a bigger challenge, this will do you nicely. It just happens to be pretty good as well in the process, too. Dick place for him to throw out the damn the damn pages. Come on, yep, there you go. Go up into the sky. The sky attack is the easiest to dodge. And he does it again, because yay. Right, he's down to one heart, which means that if I can just get like one more attack in on him, or one more attack set on him, I should be good. Come on, there you go. Fly into the air. Dodge all the fireballs. And done! Yes! I'm not going to show any more of the game because that would be a bit excessive at this point. But you did see a whole chapter. So, you know, if you can't tell whether or not you'll like this game from that, well, you probably shouldn't buy it if you want me to be honest. But, yeah, as I said, if you like your platformers with a little bit of tough but fair challenge... You saw two chapters, actually. I apologize. But, yeah... If you like your platformers with a bit of tough but fair challenge, here you go. On a silver platter. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.